Hey, how's it going? I uh, just figured I'd make a quick video here. I've been uh, been working uh, security here, and getting ready to have to go again. And um, one of the things I'm able to do while I'm there, so I read and uh, at different different amounts, at different times. Uh, one thing I've been doing is going through the Book of Revelation. Um, one reason is just to brush up myself because my pastor is getting ready to go through it again. I think at church. And another reason is I want to uh, kind of compare what the modern versions have as opposed to the King James. Uh, when I did study the majority of Revelation the first time, I studied it from an ESV. And my wife made the comment one day, he said, uh, you know, is there any differences? Like, do you think you believe something that you wouldn't, you know, had you just studied it out of it? You know, the TR, the King James. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I don't know. So I had to find out, right? Um, and, you know, long story short, no. Uh, maybe one thing uh, which i won't even show in this video because i've shown another one which has to do with the interpretation of the of the 24 elders um other than that uh that reference the whole video you can go look it up it's on my channel um I, I, what i found is really you usually minor now when i say minor it's major if we're talking about inerrancy it's major if we're talking about what's the true text of scripture uh but it's minor if we're talking about, you know, if you read an NASB and I read a King James, are we going to have radically different, you know, understandings of the book of Revelation? Or are we going to come to different interpretations at points? Um, that's more what I was concerned with, and that's what I look for. Now, I did look for in my study here basically all uh, what I would call meaningful differences. Uh, now, if you wanted to go through this, I realized really quickly and find just any difference that you possibly can. I think one time I heard uh, D.A. Waite say that he went through the Gospels alone and counted thousands upon thousands of uh, errors to the hear. What it sounds like is he just put on a tape and read as he heard it and just marked, you know, how many differences there were. Uh, that's not what I did. I actually took word by word and I kept going back and forth, <laughs> uh, reading line by line the differences now uh, if you wanted to count like I wouldn't even say plurals because I did count some plurals uh, because that does matter for interpretation uh, but if you count every synonym as different like someone ignorant like Michael, Michael Brown does then you're gonna have hundreds hundreds of differences in just the 404 verses that are in Revelation uh, maybe more differences than there are verses honestly if you're just going to count every minute little thing. But I don't think that that's a difference. I think that a real difference is something like I have highlighted here or that I show you in these other few places. Um, I'm talking about real differences where the meaning of the text change changes and there probably is a textual difference. Now, I didn't have the ability to sit here with Greek and go back and forth Greek and that would take me forever. And I'm honestly not qualified to do that. You'd want to be uh, very fluent in the, in the original languages to be able to compare Greek and Greek uh, throughout an entire book. That would take someone like me a year, uh, as opposed to I can go through English in just about a week or so like I did. So uh, very easy for me to compare, and I understand that this doesn't get to every single textual difference because there is different Greek behind each one, even if they come to have si similar uh, translations. Um, I understand that. But, I mean, simple enough, this is this was more of an applicable study, okay? Um, I wanted to do a study that applied to actual people and to myself and then throw it out here. And if anybody wants to, you know, go take the data that I have and what I've come to the conclusion of, then so be it. If not, whatever. But this has been an applicable study for me, and I'm just sharing what I learned. Um, it, it's, it's not so much about finding every little minute difference in the text. I already know that the Textus Receptus is the pure text. Um, I believe that. But the critical text, how different is it than the TR when we come to Revelation? Someone like James White will almost put out there and have you think that it is so radically different. Uh, you hear him say there's readings in Revelation that no one has ever heard of. Uh, you know, Erasmus just did this and that. And yet, when you come to do this, you see very quickly that there is very, very few uh, meaningful differences in the book of Revelation. And it's, it's encouraging uh, because what it does show is 
that regardless who you are within the Christian community, if you've not been enlightened to the things of, you know, the errors of textual criticism um, and you're using a New American Standard, praise God, you're still getting the the truth of God and most of the un, unmutilated truth of God. So I'm just going to talk as I go here. Uh, I will say this in passing. There's one more thing uh, that I would point out. The end of the book of Revelation has a uh, book of life or tree of life and a couple of readings I could have highlighted. Uh, there's probably more differences in just a few places in the book than there are in the rest. One being at the end of the book, uh, one being in Revelation, I think it was 16, verse 1, was just littered with differences. Uh, you know, just particular places. And um, I'm just, since this is all off the cuff anyways, um, I would add this. Uh, I believe, this is, this is the kind of my conclusion from this study, and from my other studies, I mean, putting it all in together, I believe that I could prove, uh, if if you were beside me throughout this whole study, I believe you would agree with me in saying this, because what I've seen is a consistent pattern where these two texts, the critical text, the you know, the majority, what, not the majority, I don't want to ever believe that, um, the critical text, and the Nestle Allen text, it is so close to the TR so often that when it departs it's it's almost on purpose you understand what I'm saying like I almost believe that the majority of the differences are not throughout history they you know just some scribe made a mistake I believe that the majority of differences between the modern critical text and the TR are purposeful they're purposeful changes um, and you know the reason I believe that is um, I believe because when you when you go through for example and you're reading you know just all right are they basically the same is it the same words is it the same one and it is for like five verses and then all of a sudden you know two or three words that change the meaning or something are gone it, it seems really odd to me. I mean, if you're going to make a scribal error, wouldn't it be in something very minute, not always, not always, or majority of the time in a couple of words or in something important? You know, it's never really these little minute things that was, well, not never, but you know what I mean? It just seems to be a pattern there, and it seems like someone's playing with the text, if you ask me. But anyways, here's one thing I wanted to throw out first. What I did notice is there are instances where Jesus or Lamb or whatnot is uh, changed from, you know, God or the title of God to He both ways. The King James only people who argue that, you know, the New Echo Standard or, you know, modern versions are attacking the deity of Christ, they do in some places. But, you know, they're just going to throw out something like this, where at the very beginning of, you know, chapter 8, you see a He, and over here you see Lamb. Uh, but this is, I'm showing you some typical differences that you're going to come across uh, from my study. I think that the final number I had, which is kind of more like an estimate more than it is a perfect number, because it was my personal opinion on what I felt like was a meaningful difference, not just like, you know, some synonym or it's basically the same wording. Maybe there's like one word dropped off that's like a conjunction or something but it doesn't change the meaning so you know you could probably have more but my final tally was about 85 uh, out of 404 verses which calculated I think to be about one every five verses there's a difference uh, which seems like a lot but it really wasn't and I think if you wanted to you could probably have 200 or so uh, differences that are slightly meaningful almost not meaningful at all uh, but differences nevertheless so about one out of two verses uh, if you really wanted to, would be a difference. Uh, just another difference here to show you. Uh, I thought this one's kind of odd. I don't know if this is ever going to come into play, but uh, this one's talking about one of the judgments, and it says that there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. The New American Standard said that they're in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months. So basically the same text, maybe, maybe, uh, but the New American Standard has the, their tails is being said that's where their power is whereas the King James doesn't identify that and I'll be honest with you I found a lot of places like that and I usually did mark them as a major difference um, and I have my paper maybe I'll do another video going through them all 
only if you really want me to leave a comment otherwise I won't do it um, but there there's a lot of places where the wording of the new American standard even if the text was the same the wording lended itself to a different interpretation and I found that to be really interesting um, and it's probably one of the biggest differences honestly other than textually it's just translationally I found that the new American standard honestly it's almost like they had a King James out and they tried to rearrange the sentences different than the King James. It would have the same text in it, but they would just be kind of reversed. And that's the way Greek is. I mean, Greek is not ordered necessarily, so you do have to order it. But what I found is the New American Standard a lot of times was hard to read because it was jumbling it up maybe to be different than the King James. I mean, I don't know. That's my own personal suspicion. Elsewise, they have some really weird verses. The way that it's arranged, it's just clunky. And I found the King James honestly easier to read. And I know that's astounding to some people, but it is. I, I would challenge you, get out a new, new American Standard, get out of King James, read them side by side, and I guarantee you within 12 chapters, uh, halfway through the book, you're going to see what I'm saying. You will, you will say, okay, like it actually, the King James flows better. Uh, I mean, the sentence structure is better. The New American Standard's clunky. It is say things like, four men, and by the way, they had five items, went here and did it. I mean, it's just like, it's jambled in, whereas the King James might say, four men with five items. You know, just something I'll throw in there. Uh, another difference here, uh, which I thought was interesting, you have upon the sea in the New American Standard into the sea, but then later on, into the air and upon there. Uh, again, is the New American Standard translators looking at the King James at this point and trying to be different, or is this a textual difference? I've not had the opportunity to fire up, you know, my uh, Logos and to whip out my critical editions, but maybe it is a textual difference. Maybe there's no textual difference. If there's no textual difference there, then I almost I think I have proof then that the New American Standard translators are just trying to be different than the King James. Uh, if there is a textual difference, then it explains itself, but it doesn't explain why there would be a textual difference there. You see what I'm saying? It's really interesting that at these very specific points, all of a sudden, the word's different. But all these other ones are the same. And the angel poured out his vial, and the seventh angel poured out his vial. All these things are the same. They're all the same until you get to one word. It, it's, it's crazy the way that it works that way. Uh, and, you know, as a repeated theme. Uh, the last one I'll show here. Again, like I said, near the end of the book, you get more differences than James White. I say that's because Erasmus didn't have the end. Uh, I disagree. I think it's because Satan hates the end of the world and what's going to happen at the end. And he wants to mutilate it and manipulate it. And here's a reason why. Uh, I mean, you know, just the difference between Erasmus, you know, and his failure here just so happens to be that the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Talking about the, the final, you know, uh, eternal state. Uh, whereas in the New American Standard, the nations will walk by its light, and the king of the earth will bring the glory into it. Um, not those which are saved. It takes the takes the blade off. Uh, there's no warning there, oh, am I saved? No, I want to be there. Is it, uh, is it exclusive? The exclusiveness is cut off. It's just all the nations of the world. You know, will context drive that and, and show you any ways that it's only saved people at that point? Should, but doesn't mean it would. Uh, trust me, and only people who act like it's guaranteed it would are people that's never talked to lay people who have weird views and they need every word of God to be convinced sometimes, which would include our saved. Um, another thing interesting here, if you notice at the end of this verse, uh, they bring their glory into it, whereas in the King James, they bring their glory and honor into it. And then later on, they both get it the same. In verse 26, glory and honor of the nations into it, and glory and honor of the nations into it. So why does the New American Standard all of a sudden just drop off, uh, you know, and honor into it? it makes basically no sense. Uh, you know, what that probably is, is the editors of the New American Standard with their own stupid, you know, logical conclusions saying, well, they're more likely to uh, add than delete, therefore these few manuscripts that don't have an honor into it are probably the right ones, you know, some more onic logic like that probably led to that, but anyways, you know, figured I'd just throw some stuff out there for my study. It took me probably around 10 hours to do that um, and to do what I've done. If you got any questions, drop me a comment. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll be making a video on the Michael Brown garbage here soon. Until then, 
God bless.